Welcome everybody to Ask the Organizer. My name is Whitney Ziegler and I'm the founder of Big Rocks Organizing and I'm a certified professional organizer. We have several of our fantastic team members and former team member in the house today. And we are also excited to have some of our favorite nonprofits that we partner with when we're assisting our clients with right sizing their items. So today we're gonna talk about giving back while clearing out. And what I would love to do is have each of our four nonprofit partners go ahead and introduce themselves and tell us about the mission of their organization and the items they're looking for, the items they're not looking for. And then we'll open up the floor and we'll just have an open conversation, an open Q&A. We love to hear your questions as well. Um, so I'm wondering if, Anne, if we could kick it off with you. Sure, be happy to. So I'm Ann Sharon. I'm a donation specialist with Scrap Creative Reuse here in Portland. And uh, our mission is essentially to inspire creativity and sustainable behavior by providing affordable materials and educational programs. We do a lot of education things for kids and also kind of crafternoon and afternoon, evening kind of adult programs where we have like a fiber club and things like that. Um, Basically, we run a retail store <laughs> and we take in all the donations that we take in or what's sold in the store. And it's, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Scrap, but it's essentially a craft store. So um, art supplies, party supplies, we have sections for just plastic and metal and wood, things like that. Um, currently, we are of a shortage of yarn. So we just put out a call for yarn. We can take any time. Um, we, I think yarn and fabric are probably our two best sellers. So we're always looking for those. But we take, we probably take a thousand different items. I think there's a list on our donations page that lists all of the things that we do take and all the things we don't take, just because it is a pretty extensive um, list of things. And I think one of the unique things about scrap is we also take used materials as well as new materials. I think that's post pandemic, it's been harder and harder to find places that will take packages that have been open. So, but we're happy to take used art supplies to use party supplies, things like that. Um, and currently we only have open donations on Fridays from 11 to two, but we're going to be expanding that a little bit next year. So hopefully it'll make it a little bit more convenient for folks. We do have appointments on other days, but um, there's just so much stuff coming at us constantly that we're trying to figure out a way to like slowly take more without getting completely crushed under the weight of all the stuff that's out there. But if you ever wonder if you can donate anything, feel free to reach out to us because um, our staff is very happy to talk to donors. Yeah. Were there other things you wanted me to add, Whitney? That's a wonderful overview. We'll start there, but I do have a question for you about fabric when we circle back to questions. So please remind me. <laughs> Melissa, would you like to go next? Sure. Uh, thank you so much for allowing me this space to talk a little bit about the Habitat for Humanity Restore. Uh, so my name is Melissa and I am the store manager of the Beaverton Restore location um, with Habitat for Humanity Portland region. We have um, three different restore locations, uh, Beaverton, Portland, and Gresham. And for anyone who is not super familiar with Restore um, and the way that we are affiliated with Habitat for Humanity, um, we are a home improvement outlet. Um, so we're a donation center as well as a retail store. Um, we take in donated, um, we take in donations of everything having to do with home improvement um, from building materials to like home decor and furniture. Um, we resell all of those items back into the community for a fraction of the retail value. Um, and then all of the funds that we raise at the ReStore, we then donate to our local affiliate who uses that funding um, for all of our home building programs to build affordable housing in our local community. Um, so that is ReStore and how we're affiliated with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, so our main mission here is to raise that funding for Habitat, um, but also to keep usable materials out of the landfill um, and to give them a new home and allow them uh, a new purpose. So talking specifically a little bit more about donations for ReStore, um, we accept donations at our store locations. Uh, every day except for Tuesdays, we need one day a week to process everything that's coming in. Um, but from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. every other day of the week, including the weekends, um, folks can come right to our stores to drop off donations. 
We also have a donation pickup service. So we have trucks that go out into the community um, to residences as well as businesses to pick up uh, larger items that maybe are not able to be brought to our stores. Um, we have uh, a $40 pickup fee for our donation pickup service, um, but we've also partnered with another organization called Resupply, which um, is able to go to people's homes and take everything that you have, and they will go to, um, uh, they have a list of nonprofits that they work with, other organizations that they go to. They try to find a home for everything that they possibly can. Um, and so they have a little more um, flexibility, ability for faster pickup times and um, picking up larger items and things of that nature. Um, but so we have that pickup service to be able to get donations brought to us. Uh, business donations are actually free. Um, so that's an awesome perk for any businesses that are looking to donate. Um, doesn't have to be a large quantity of things, but just anything coming from a business, uh, we waive that pickup fee. We take in um, so many different types of items. Uh, everything from, like I said, building materials. So thinking about lumber, windows, doors, um, plumbing and electrical pieces flooring, um, cabinetry, all sorts of items. And then we also, specifically at our location, we see the most um, selection of furniture donations, a little bit of home goods and home decor items. Um, we have a full list of our all of our guidelines for our donations listed on our website. Um, our website is pdxrestore.org. Um, it's really user-friendly. It kind of takes you to whichever category you have for donations and breaks it down into, yes, we'll take this, or no, we would have to pass on this. Um, I'm really excited to learn more about other organizations and what you all take, because we always try to provide a list of alternative resources if folks come to us and they have something that unfortunately we can't take. Um, so I'm really excited to connect with you all and see if these other organizations are places that we don't already have on our list. We would love to add you. Um, and the last thing I'll add about donations is we also do metal recycling at the ReStore. So in terms of any donations that are items that are mostly made of metal, um, we can take. And if it's something we're able to resell, we will always try to do that first. Um, but if not, we also can recycle metal and we make um, money off of that as well, which goes right back into Habitat. Um, yeah, I think that kind of covers most of it and I'll I'll leave it there and be happy to answer any more specific questions about anything that we um, take or don't take. Thank you so much, Melissa. Becca, may I ask you to go next? Yeah, of course. Uh, so I am Becca, I work with Community Warehouse. We are your local furniture bank. Um, our primary mission is to help supply furniture for those who have trouble accessing it and uh, supply that with dignity. Um, so what we do is we take in donations of furniture. We have them in our furniture bank where people can come in with their caseworkers and case managers and they get a walk on the floor and pick out whatever furniture they would want and be able to bring it to their house. Because a lot of times when people are coming from situations such as ending homelessness, previously incarcerated, um, survivors of DV, like it's kind of hard to find a new place and furnish it and have everything because that's a major expense. So we try to help uh, be able to supply all of that along with the ability to choose what furniture they get to put in their new home. So it's amazing and wonderful to see all of this kind of like, you know, turn a house into a home. Uh, so we take a lot of furniture. <laughs> We're always in need of furniture. Um, some of our most needed items as far as that goes is mattresses and couches. We do take used mattresses, but we are very picky because everything that comes into our uh, furniture bank will be reused. So we want to make sure everything is sanitary and good and high quality for someone else to be using in the future. Um, we also take other home goods such as dishes, pots and pans, towels, bed sheets, that, and pillows, all that kind of stuff. We have a very long extensive list on our website of things we do and do not take. Um, there are a couple different ways that you people can donate furniture to us. The first and easiest is just to bring it by one of our locations. We have locations in uh, Twelton, Portland, and Gresham. The hours are online because they are switching very soon. We are switching to a four-day work week in the new year. So if you are, if you know what our hours are, check online. They will be changing as of January 1st. 
Um, so that's kind of exciting to have longer hours and short end, but shorter weeks. Um, so uh, you'd be able to drop off the donations there. The people who are at the donation intake center will be able to say, yes, we can take this. No, we cannot. Most of the time, if it's furniture in really good condition, we can take it. Uh, it's hard to give a guarantee though. Uh, another way is to sign up online. Uh, like Habitat, we use resupply for our priority pickups. They're very fast, but they also cost a little bit more than our standard uh, pickups. Our standard pickups we do ourselves. Uh, by We have some trucks that can come to your house, load up the furniture, put it in. Again, we are kind of picking what we take, so we might say no to some items that people want to donate. Uh, but we want to make sure we're supplying quality items to the families that need the furniture. Um, so that's able to go online. Right now in December, we have a sliding scale fee for like $20 for any pickup, no matter the amount of furniture. In January, we have this amazing opportunity to have a uh, free pickup for the entire month of January due to a very generous grant. So if you are wanting to donate soon, now is a very good time to sign up for either December or January. Um, so keep an eye out for all of that. Um, and yeah, it's a kind of basic rundown of Community Warehouse, who we are and what we do. Oh, almost forgot. We also have an estate store uh, where you can go and buy some of the items that are donated that uh, are kind of harder to put into homes, that a lot more like antiques and specialty items and all those monies, all that money goes straight to the furniture bank so we can keep the lights on. So uh, you can also go to either of our two uh, state stores that are in Twalton and Portland and you can check it out and buy some stuff. Right now there's amazing Christmas stuff out uh, to purchase. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Becca. And last but certainly not least, Liz. Hi, everybody. My name is Liz Starkey, and I'm the development director over at Rosehaven. Um, and Rosehaven is the only day shelter and community center in Portland, specifically for women, children, and people marginalized by their gender. Um, so right now, especially with this daytime camping ban, we're seeing about 150 guests a day, every single day. There is a line around the block for about an hour to two hours before we open. And we've actually been hitting capacity daily and having to hold people at the front before we can bring more folks in. Um, so definitely need all the support we can get. Grateful for this opportunity to be here. Um, so much of what we do is getting supplies into the hands of folks that need them. So. Um, we have an on-site clothing boutique for our guests um, where they get to go shopping, of course, at no cost every other week. And they can choose three new outfits for themselves and up to two kids at a time every time they go shopping. Um, there are also housewares available in the shop. So we don't accept large furniture, but we will accept small appliances, coffee makers, small TVs, toasters, pots, pans, things like that. Um, that said, if somebody passes away or um, you're moving, always give us a call because I do have um, just kind of one shelf available for that. So oftentimes I am oh, I'm constantly referring folks over to Community Warehouse and some of our other partners here. Um, our primary need is um, clothing, uh, particularly for uh, women, uh, mostly adults. We also serve a lot of kids. Um, I will say that kids grow out of clothes. So we tend to get that donated a lot more and the kids clothes tends to generally not be in as great of condition. So um, I don't generally advertise that that's something that we need. It just tends to kind of show up. Um, in addition to clothing, we always need hygiene supplies. So things like deodorant, soap, shampoo, conditioner, diapers, wipes. Um, a lot of people don't realize that you actually cannot purchase any of those uh, items with food stamps or SNAP benefits. So that's a huge need for many of our guests, even those that are lucky enough to have stable housing, they may rely on us for diapers and wipes, pads, tampons, things like that. Um, hygiene supplies do need to be new and unopened with the exception of pads, tampons, and diapers, including adult diapers. If you have a package that you've already opened, you can bring that in and we actually repackage those into smaller, more easy to carry uh, packages for our guests. Um, and pretty much everything can be gently used except for hygiene supplies and underwear and socks. Uh, bras can be gently used. We always need bras. Um, but really our top needs, the things that we never ever can get enough of 
are um, anything with a handle or wheels. So rolling luggage, um, purses, you know, imagine if you have to carry all your belongings everywhere you go, those are things that we desperately need. Um, anything that is waterproof. So in addition to jackets, we need tarps, tents, sleeping bags, anything that can keep you and your belongings dry. Um, shoes, comfortable walking shoes. I think, um, especially because we're a women's center, people tend to donate the frilly stuff to us that they want out of their closet, um, not the things that our guests necessarily really need. Um, so always that athletic wear, hoodies, jeans, comfortable walking shoes, sneakers, boots this time of year. Those are the type of things that I can just never keep enough of. Um, we also always desperately need plus size clothing. Um, those things just don't get donated as often. They're more expensive to purchase. And um, my plus size friends tell me that when you find something that you like, you tend to wear it until, until it falls apart. You're just not constantly buying clothes in the same way. So there's always a need for plus size as well. Um, yeah, so we update our website, which is rosehaven.org every single Monday. So if we run out of something, I post it on there. So we're always updating our top needs. We also do a post on Instagram and Facebook every Monday where we take a picture of our whiteboard and what we're running low on. And so we share that with the community. So we update that website every single week. Um, but then there's also kind of that running list of things that we can just never, ever get enough of. Um, you know, the main thing that we want to do, and I think this is probably a common theme with all of our agencies, is we want to promote dignity, right? We're working with folks that have been systematically marginalized, and it's a really tough job to communicate to the community uh, what are those needs. You know, it needs to be seasonal because we all have really limited capacity and space as well. So could you put this on your body today and wear it outside? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, it's something that you want to bring to Rosehaven. Um, don't bring us flip flops and you know swimsuits when it's 20 degrees outside. Um, same, and you know this type of year we really need that that cold weather gear. So really, you know, with everything we do, our, our biggest goal is to promote dignity. Um, and so making sure that it's in good condition, it doesn't smell funny, is it clean and ready to wear? Because we do not have capacity to launder everything that come comes through. Um, so those are really, really our biggest needs, that luggage, the tents, tarps, sleeping bags, huge gap there, because as I said, I think people tend to buy more clothes than they need. And with fast fashion, the way it is, we're constantly getting clothing donations. Um, but we just, people don't do that with camping gear and that that is a huge need. And that is actually keeping people alive, especially right now when all of the shelters are at capacity with wait lists, we desperately need those tents, tarps, sleeping bags stuff like that. So yeah, check us out. It's rosehaven.org. And please follow us on Instagram as well. Because as I said, we're, we're constantly kind of letting the community know what those top needs are. Thank you so much, Liz. Thank you to all of our agencies who are here today. Let's open it up for your questions. I have a question. Um, where Rose Haven, where are you located? We are right on the corner of 18th Avenue and Gleason Street in Northwest Portland. So we're in the Alphabet District. Um, if you're familiar with the neighborhood, it's uh, where the old World Cup coffee and tea used to be. So kind of right across the street from Cooch Park um, and it's right off of the 405 freeway. So if you're taking that Gleason Street exit, we're right next to the Mission Theater right off of the, the Gleason Street exit. And then Jean Harkin, I saw your hand up, but you're muted. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, yes, I was wanted to ask about Rosehaven also. Are you located anywhere near Scrap? Yeah, Scrap is our neighbor, actually. They're um, they're on like Burnside and 18th, and we are on 18th and Gleason. Um, and I just want to give a shout out to Scrap because you all have been so helpful to us. Not only do you accept many of the things that we can't accept, but you came through for our Mother's Day walk and did a little pop-up tent where our guests could do crafting. So we love Scrap. They're great neighbors. Right. I was just down at Scrap not too long ago, and I saw Anne there and recognized her from Big Rocks. Um, so I yes, I was wondering if that's where you're located. Also, um, do you happen to do pickups at all? We do not do pickups at Rosehaven. Um, and I guess I should have also mentioned that our donation hours are Tuesday and Thursdays in the afternoons from one to four. So those are our drop-in hours where you can just kind of swing by with things. 
If those times don't work for you, just let us know. I can generally be pretty amenable. We we oftentimes have collection points throughout town. So on any given day, there's different people doing collections for us kind of all over town places I can direct you. And oftentimes I will have people drop things off on my porch if it's an evening or a weekend and people aren't available, that's a safe place. So generally, like if our general donation times don't work for you, just reach out and we'll try to figure something out. But we have a pretty small staff, so it's pretty hard for us to get volunteers to come out and kind of pick things up. So what times on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons did you say? Two to From four? One, one, 1 to 4 p.m. 1 to 4, okay, thank you. Yeah. What other questions do folks have? I just wanted to say that I've given things to Community Warehouse and at one point they asked me for a picture of what I was um, wanting to donate. And I thought that was a really elegant way to make sure that you want it. Um, so I took a picture, emailed it, got an email back. I don't know, it seemed prompt, probably not the, next, the same day, but it was uh, very useful. And I found that to work really well for me. Yeah, it's a lot of times people say, oh, I have this type of furniture and it's that can mean a lot of things like uh, so like a couch can look a lot of different ways. Same thing with a dresser. So a lot of times pictures are really helpful to kind of know what we can and can't take to kind of give you a better idea. So thank you for your donation. OK, Tell since no one else is saying, I just want to say it was my old my previous marriage wedding. sign. I was thrilled to have somebody else have that. <laughs> That's a good point, Lori. Something may or may not have good memories for people. And if you're ready to pass it on and let it have a new life with somebody who will be thrilled to have it, that always feels good. Jocelyn, I saw you turn your camera on. Were you wanting to show us one of the things that you made from repurposed materials that you purchased? Well, I wanted to ask a question actually for Community Warehouse with respect to um used linens, towels. I know that I've donated a mattress there before, but um, what kind of quality or what you wouldn't turn away for towels and sheets, et cetera? Yeah, so we do ask for towels, sheets, and everything to have no rips, stains, tears, uh, smells, dog hair, pet hair in general. Uh, we do have volunteers that come through and process everything. So if something does come through that is uh, not high enough quality, we do recycle uh, anything that is not um, up to our standards because we want to make sure that if someone's getting new bed sheets, they don't have tears in it or like the fitted sheets, like the elastic still works. So we do have volunteers that will go through all of that. But if it does have like a towel has major stains on it, we end up actually putting our towels towards the Humane Society and other things like that. So there's other alternative ways to uh, put a lot of those linens. Um, and we give mo uh, a lot of the linens that are pretty good quality, just not high enough quality to another nonprofit. And everything that's kind of like really bad and can't really be reused, we end up recycling. And that would hold true for pillows as well, because I think we've washed them before we've donated them. Yes, pillows we have very high standards for, like mattresses. If someone's going to put their head on it for eight hours a day, we want to make sure that it is clean and would not be something that you would not personally want to use yourself from if it's stained from a stranger. So no stains or anything like that. Uh, if you are able to bring them in clean, that is great. Pillows is the one thing that we cannot recycle or redonate. So pillows are the one thing that we would have to throw away just for sanitary reasons. So. Kathy? Yes, um, and I missed the beginning, so you may have already covered this, but for a community warehouse, as far as mattresses, is there a age limit? I mean, like if I'm planning to get a new mattress and I've had the mattress for 12 years, is that something you would want or, or would you rather not? The age doesn't really matter. It's more of the quality of the mattress. So if it's a mattress that is not stained, ripped, tear, torn, a lot of mattresses do have minor stains, which we do have to turn away. Um, so if you just can see if it has stains on it, uh, we might be able to take it. I can't give promises for anything. Oh, uh, I know. It's kind of hard when it's like a maybe, but uh, a lot of times people have 
mattresses in their second bedroom that they're replacing that almost never get used and they're in like perfect condition. So the age doesn't matter as much as the quality that they're in. Okay. And yeah, and I would just like also to say <clears throat> when I had moved from a much bigger house to a smaller house, it was great to be able to give it all to you guys. So I'm really glad you're there. Thank you. I have a general question about clothing. Do you prefer donors to wash everything before they bring it to you? At Rosehaven, we do say, we say we want it to be able to go on to somebody's body right away. So it's really, you know, a judgment call to, on you. Like, is it is it ready to wear? Does it smell funky? Has it been in a closet? Has it been in a basement where it smells like mildew? Or has it been in a closet with you know, fresh air circulating through. Um, it's really just a matter of like, could you put it on your body today? Um, and does, you know, is it free of pet hair? Um, you know, feeling sometimes with a lot of the clothes today, you wash it once and it falls apart. So I had a lady who was really well-intentioned who every time she purchased brand new underwear for us, she would wash it and bring it in because she said she didn't like to wear things right out of the package. And then it was confusing some of our volunteers that it was coming in washed. So then I had her put it in Ziploc bags that and note, brand new, never worn, freshly washed, and that kind of solved that problem. Go back to my original fabric question for you. Does the fabric need to be a minimum size or are you or any specific kinds of fabric you don't take? Yeah, so anything that's not a quilting fabric needs to be a yard or more. If it's quilting, we'll take what are called fat quarters or eighths. Um, we essentially just don't want little pieces of fabric, fabric scraps, even though our name is scrap, <laughs> we generally don't want your scraps. It's confusing. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but the, yeah, the more yardage, the better. And if it has selvage, um, that's a bonus. And Sorry, I, would, oh, I would just add, if you have Ridwell, um, you can put fabric scraps in your threads bags. Thank you, Kathy. My sister yeah. collects them in California and gives them to me. So. I would just love to give a shout out to Ridwell because if anybody here isn't using that service, they have helped Rosehaven so much. Um, and yeah, it's just a great way to keep things out of landfills. And they really are giving back to organizations like ours and kind of taking on that storage issue that we are so challenged with. Um, so right now, if you go into our clothing boutique, all of the jewelry in there is from Ridwell. They also collected coats for us. They did a, co um, a purse collection. Ridwell is amazing. That's awesome. We use them on our team and we'll take things from our clients' homes and we're right-sizing with them and then we'll recycle them through Ridwell. So it's, it's a wonderful service. Yeah, Diane, do you have a question? So hi. I'm... Um... So I'm actually tuning in today from Miam Hill County. And part of the reason that I wanted to tune in was I wanted to see if there is some type of centralized directory that has maybe been, been put together in the Portland area for folks that when they are trying to when give back while cleaning out, I love this title, by the way, um, that would give them an idea of all the different places that are available. So I'm asking this because like here in Yam Hill County, I frequently, because I know a lot of resources in town, I'll get texts all the time like, hey, I've got whatever, where should I take it? And so what I was wondering is if something like that already exists, um, if it's a useful thing and if I could borrow it so I could do something like that here. <laughs> So I don't know specifically who I'm asking that question to, but if anybody knows. I just threw something in the chat. I'm not aware of that, but gosh, that is a great idea. <laughs> right? Just kind of like a, a centralized phone book or, you know, a Facebook page or something where all of those resources are in one central location. So you could refer people to like, hey, just go to here and that will tell you, you know. I wonder if the Street Roots Haven Resource or... Guide might be a good place to like start from if anybody here was going to try to put something like that together, because that is the primary resource that we use when we're working with humans, trying to access them, you know, give them access to human services. And so like, I know that Community Warehouse and Rosehaven are all listed in there as places where people can go to seek help and collect supplies. 
And so that might be like a good starting point to kind of take it to that next level. And it might be interesting. I might actually reach out to Street Roots and just drop this idea and see if they would be willing to like add a directory like that to their website or something because they they already do all that outreach every year or so. I do believe Metro has a list on their website. I just Googled it, uh, uh, Metro donation. And I saw a couple of ours listed on there. It doesn't look like it has very specific what everything is for, but it is has it does have an alphabetical list of a lot of different nonprofits you can donate things to. So that might also be a, a good resource to use. Possibly 211 info. I just feel like yeah. everybody should have like some central living document that encompasses all of this. Well, we do for our team. We get we asked a lot. Either our own app with over 400 different resources, but they're Portland Metro specific, Diane. So I'm sorry about that, <laughs> but no, that it's, it's okay. It's still, it's, it's helpful just to know what things are already in place. I mean, why reinvent the wheel, right? If, you know, there's something awesome already out there. So, so thank you. Thanks for um, hearing my question. Great question. Well, I'm curious for all of our agencies, what is something that's an unusual item that people don't really expect you to take, but you do take it? Um, like for example, with Restore, I didn't know that they took live plants or bulbs, things like that. Anything surprising that you take that you want to share with us? Melissa, do you guys do paint at your uh, recycled paint at your habitats? Yes, that was actually what just came to mind. Um, we are a paint care drop-off center, which a lot of folks don't know. Um, so we do take um, paint that we can e either resell or for recycling. Um, and so the guidelines around that is that there has to be at least a quarter um, of a can left of the paint. So it can't be completely, you know, down, down to the last little bit empty. Um, and it has to have the original label on it. So it can't be just a, you know, silver can that you've written uh, hallway color on um, or paint that's been transferred into any other kind of container. Um, but yeah, we, we take paint and then we can either resell or recycle paint. And that's one that a lot of folks I think don't know for Restore. I guess for Rosehaven, I would say that um, we do a lot of classes and activities around here as well. Um, so we do accept some art, art supplies. Um, our yarn group is really popular, so I don't want to take away from scrap, but we do always accept uh, crochet, knitting needles, things like that. Jewelry making is also a really popular class, so we, we accept uh, beads and jewelry making supplies um things like that but really if it's a larger donation of that stuff coming in I'll always refer them to scrap but if it's just like really specific stuff that's well organized and I can just put it right into the activity room those are also things that that we can always use and I guess the other thing is like walkers and canes are a huge need uh we have a lot of canes right now but walkers the ones with wheels especially as soon as those come in the door, those move right out. We're seeing a, an aging population of folks in need for sure. The medical equipment just in general, um, give us a call. If you have something oddball that you're not sure about, get, give us a call, but things like adult diapers, gauze, wound care items, we can use those for our clinic as well. For scrap, one thing that came to mind for me is people's photographs. Um, often they'll donate their scrapbooks and feel like, oh no, it's full of photos. You wouldn't want that. But actually we have a whole bin of other people's pictures that you can buy here. And especially vintage photos are very popular. I think a lot of the odd things that Community Warehouse takes is items specifically for our state store. So a lot of people will donate very specific items for our state store to sell. Uh, I think most recently there was a big run on uh, Christmas yard baubles uh, that a lot, there was a, something happened and someone donated a lot of them and we had a run on our store trying to get all of them out of the store. They were gone within one day of us being open. So I think a lot of the weird unique things are for the state store but a lot of those if you want to donate them uh we do ask that you specifically see if we can take it first and reach out to our state store managers just to make sure that they can get the okay like yes this is something we can sell um but 
yeah, I think that, and then just the fact that we take mattresses, because a lot of places that take furniture don't always take used mattresses, so that's always kind of like a weird one out there for uh, other furniture banks, because not everyone takes those. Yeah, and pillows, the fact that you'll take pillows too, that's that's huge. Um, so then on the other side of the coin, I know people are well-intentioned, but what are some things that you're frequently getting that you do not want? Or what would you like us to know not to bring to you? <laughs> I can go first on this one. There is a very long list. Um, starting off with baby items, there's a lot of safety regulations when it comes to baby things. And we do not want to give out anything that's unsafe. So just as a rule of thumb, we don't take any cribs or anything like that. Um, we also do not take uh, headboards for bed frames. We take platform frames, but not headboards, just for space capacity within our warehouse. So while it's kind of weird when we take head when we take bed frames. It's very specific items. Um, and then a lot of times it's just things that are overly used because we want to make sure that it has a good long lifespan for its new home that it's going into. So a lot of things that are just ripped up or not like it's worn, but so, like someone thinks like, oh, someone can use this, but in reality, it's a low enough quality that it's not giving dignity to whoever would be using it next. Um, so a lot of the items that are just a little bit, little bit too worn and maybe could be reused or repurposed or something in a different capacity, but it's not gonna be good just to go straight from their house into a new home. There's a couple other things that I think are unique about Community Warehouse too, at least from what our team understands, Becca, about, can you tell us about glass tabletops and alcohol related items? Yes, um, those are kind of like the weird items. Sometimes the estate store will take them, sometimes they won't, but we do not have anything alcohol related in our furniture bank. There's a lot of people coming through the furniture bank who have various different traumas from their life that we do not want to trigger anything. So anything that has um, anything related to alcohol, whether it be a wine glass or a wine rack, where it's, even if there's not directly related with alcohol, that's meant to hold wine bottles. That's something that the estate store might sell. Uh, however, we do not put that in our furniture bank. And then the glass tables, um, glass just breaks really easily when it goes into a truck. So if we're going to someone's house to pick something up and bring it to our furniture bank and then loading it on another truck to bring it to someone else's house, there's a high risk of damage during that process. And we wanna make sure we can give high quality unbroken <laughs> items to anyone who's coming to the furniture bank for furniture. So glass top tables are usually almost always a no um, with some very few exceptions that the st uh, state store makes because they think that they can sell it. Thank you for that. I would say for scrap, we get a lot of stuff we don't want. Um, I think it's just because we accept a lot of things that seem like garbage. It's often funny to try to explain to someone who's donating, yes, I want your prescription pill bottles, but I don't want your vitamin bottles because it is like this weird line of like, yes, but no. Um, so I think things like single use food containers, we don't want, like we want plastic containers, but we don't want single use food containers or like I said, vitamin bottles or any giant plastic food containers, those kind of things. Um, people often try to donate aerosols like spray glue or paint or that kind of thing. We can't take any of those. Um, even if it's fun, silly string, we can't take it. Um, and then things like just panes of glass, if it came from a frame, but it's not in a frame, we just can't take it because it'll break and cause uh, issues. And then we don't take pillows, but we do take the stuffing that makes a pillow. So often people will bring their pillows and we tell them we don't take pillows and then they'll just take the pillowcase off and we actually can take the stuffing that's inside the pillow. So that's another one of those like, yes, but no, sorry, but yes, kind of situation. So we, it's a lot of um, when you donate to scrap, I think people over time understand that you're going to get there and we're going to have a conversation about what you brought. And sometimes we will be able to take it and sometimes we won't be able to take it. And it's just sort of the nature of our reality yeah. here. Well, I can definitely relate to that. I'm sure we all can. It's a lot of tough conversations with donors because I think everybody, everybody is well-intentioned when they're bringing things in. And unless you're working in the donation processing, you don't realize how quickly overwhelming things can get. Um, for us, even I would say the number one thing that people want to give me that we don't take is used toys. We serve children. We serve a lot of children. 
we do not have capacity for for used toys. First of all, most of us, unless we have kids, we don't even know what they are if they're working properly. Um, but they, yeah, and they can just get worn worn out and they take up a lot of space. So we don't accept used toys. We do an adopt a family program every year for our kids. So we'll actually go shopping and match them with donors based off of what their wish list is rather than giving them leftovers. Um, that's probably probably the number one thing. And yeah, we we don't accept pillows, even though we do accept other housewares just because bed bugs are a big thing in the community that we we serve um yeah so but you know we do do need pillow cases um and things like towels and blankets and, and stuff like that but can't take the can't take the pillows or mattresses or toys i can speak a little bit um to the restore, um, a couple of things that we are not able to accept. Um, we don't take mattresses or box springs at the restore. Um, we only do complete bed frames, um, as well as used textiles, sheet sets, blankets, pillows. Um, we don't, we aren't able to accept those. Um, we have one specific restore location that does clothing. So our Gresham location actually does take clothing. Um, I believe their guidelines in terms of clothing is um, no socks and underwear, but they will do everything else as long as it is clean. Um, and they partner with another organization because they actually uh, receive so much clothing donations out there in Gresham. Um, it's a little too much for us to process on our own. So they've partnered with another organization that they um, pass some of those donations onto as well. Um, but for us here in Beaverton in our Portland location, we are not able to take clothing. Um, the other thing that we see often, and it, it really is um, very condition-based, but just in terms of all of the furniture that folks come to donate, uh, particle board press board furniture, like your typical Ikea furniture, um, is just, it doesn't stand up as well as uh, hardwood furniture. And so depending on the condition, uh, if it is in, in good condition, we're able to accept it. Um, but as soon as there's kind of any chipping or water damage on anything that is particle board, press board material, um, we unfortunately have to pass on those items because it's just hard for us to be able to resell back into the community. Um, but I think those are the things that we see most frequently that unfortunately we're not not looking for or not able to take here. Thank you. Um, Melissa, earlier you mentioned that you're eager to get donations from businesses. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you're looking for? Yeah, definitely. Um, really, my location in particular, and just uh, in recent months, we've been really looking for a lot more of the building material donations, um, lumber, windows and doors, uh, flooring, even appliances and lighting. Um, and so that is mostly when we receive large quantities, um, and especially business donations, it's usually larger quantities or pallets of some of those building materials. Um, so that's really what we're in need of, um, especially most at my location, because most of the residential donations that are coming in at our store location are furniture and home goods, which is incredible. Um, but yeah, what the community is, is looking for at an affordable price for from us is really those building materials to be able to make those um, complete those home improvement projects. So that's that's what we're looking for the most. But any um, any business looking to donate um, can chat with our donation pickup department. And yeah, it doesn't strictly have to be building materials by any means. Um, but yeah, that's definitely what we're feeling we're in need of at the at this time. Thank you for that. I'm curious, what other questions do folks have? Is anyone planning on making a donation soon to one of our agencies here today? Yeah, that's great, Elizabeth. Jocelyn, would you like to show us one of your birdhouses? Oh, and Kathy's going to make a donation too. That's great. What I was going to say is um, I know in the past I've 
uh, taken items, uh, medical devices like shower chairs and walkers, et cetera, to habitat. But I also have rolling walkers that could potentially go to Rosehaven. So I'm wondering if um, the two of you might coordinate as well, because I know, Melissa, sometimes you have a plethora of walkers and maybe I don't know what happens to those when if people buy them or if they get recycled, but it might be an opportunity to partner with Rosehaven as well to pass on things that you might pick up. Absolutely. I've been taking some notes, Liz, so we can connect after this, because uh, that was my first thought, too, was sometimes we um, receive some items that we will certainly try to sell, but might not be quite so successful for the market shopping at Restore. Um, and yeah, it might be some great items that we could pass along to Rosehaven for sure. Well, thank you so much. I was thinking, too, when I was overhearing you all talking that the the baby stuff, you know, we accept that we don't accept like pack and plays and cribs but the one thing that we do accept even if it says it's expired or is the is the strollers um if it has wheels if it has wheels we can use it um car seats same we're, we're pretty picky about those because they have expiration dates and see, people only seem to want to donate them once they're expired um but yeah anything with wheels bring it on <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Melissa, does Restore take sporting goods or bicycles? Yes, we do. We take sporting goods, um, bicycles, um, camping and like outdoor type of equipment, um, as well as fitness equipment. This is the time of year that people are looking for that come, you know, thinking about New Year's resolutions. Um, so yeah, we do. We take uh, all sorts of like sporting and, and outdoor equipment as well. What other questions do folks have? This is Gloria. I don't have a question, but my goodness, what a wealth of information. Thank you all so much. I wish you'd been in Indiana where my sister's husband just died and they, she didn't know what to do with all of his clothing. But this is so, such a marvelous resource. Thank you all so much. Thanks for joining us today, Gloria. Is there anything else that folks from our partner agencies would like to share with us? I guess I forgot to mention that we can also use uh, food items uh, for our pantry. So non-perishable food items, canned goods, granola bars, and you know anything that's easy to pack and go and then you know, in addition to giving people kind of food to go and triaging folks on the street, we do hot meals five days a week. So our kitchen, we just, as we've been seeing more people, the more shelf stable goods that we can get are great. And also, um, you know, our food has to be, it has to be prepared in a commercial kitchen for us to serve it. So um, if you, you have a, a party at home and you have extra food, it wouldn't really work or you want to bake cookies for us, that wouldn't work. But say you cater a big event and you end up with a couple of extra pans, hotel pans of food, that is something that we can serve to our guests um, as long as it's transported in a in a safe way. So that's another, another thing we can use. That's really great to know. Kayla and I just assisted a client with right-sizing her pantry today. So there's always opportunities to donate shelf-stable food to you. <laughs> Uh, we have a question in the chat, which is, if sheets are clean and in good condition, do they need to be matched sets? I believe that would be for a community warehouse. No, they do not need to be matched sets. If they are, that's great. But a lot of times we will just make our own sets. Uh, we try to make sure that the colors go well together when we make them ourselves so that it's not completely clashing colors. Um, but no, it does not need to be like that. We do tend to have a lot more flat sheets than fitted sheets. So if you have extra fitted sheets for whatever reason, those are always in higher demand than the flat sheets just because we get so many of those in. We do end up having to redonate to other organizations with all the flat sheets that we do receive. Um, so yeah, we we will take, but if we will take them, even if you just have a flat sheet and we can try and make a good set with it. 
What other questions do folks have? Kathy? Um, I have a question for um, the Restore. Um, so, <clears throat> I mean, I assume I can bring things and then you'll tell me whether they're things you can use or not. Because Yeah, can, absolutely. We will have always have the... Yeah, we'll have a staff member um, on our donation doc to assist and, and let donors know what we're able to accept and what we are not able to accept. Um, we do have a full list of our guidelines on our website. Um, hopefully that is helpful if you have a lot of stuff or larger items that are harder to move so you can kind of get a better idea um, before bringing it over. Um, but yeah, we will have someone there who will go through all the donations. with. I was donors. just looking at that, but do you take just random pieces of wood or anything like that like um yeah material. so for lumber uh for dimensional lumber it's anything five feet or longer um for sheet goods like pieces of plywood or sheetrock or anything like that um it would be a two by four size or larger that's about half a sheet um so they yeah. do have to meet those size requirements otherwise they are um not quite as usable for folks but we will take leftover pieces for sure Okay, great. Any last questions or or maybe testimonials for our agencies here in-house today? Yeah, I have a shout out to the people who work the dock at Habitat. They are amazing. They're so great. Thank you so much. We try to Hi, make this... experience great for everyone, even if we aren't able to take take every donation. Yeah, they're so nice, even when they're saying, we can't take that. <laughs> What are you crazy? <laughs> I have a question. We just tore down our fence and we have all of the boards in the backyard. Do you take those? Yeah, I would say as long as they're free of any of the um, hardware, so they can't have any nails or screws or staples in them. Um, but yeah, that, that should be something that we'd be able to take. Do you want my testimonial now, Whitney? Yeah, and then I wanted to give a shout out to Community Warehouse after that. All right, so I did this earlier, but we were just talking about fence boards. So um, I'm building birdhouses. I'm a master recycler. I went through Washington County training, but I've been doing art all my life. But most of my artwork... Um, deals with recycled materials. And I've been in a number of shows that require recycled materials. So it's going to be hard to kind of show this, but up close and personal is some trim, which was etched out that I purchased at Habitat at Restore. So that's one thing. And the fence boards I actually received from a friend most of my paint comes from Restore. Some of my items, which I just found, was at uh, PDX Scrap when our Master Recyclers course took a field trip there as well as Restore. Um, the, the trim here, which is the top of the roof, it's hard to show right now, I apologize. That came from Restore. And the little knob, there's a lot of door handles and knobs and things that the staff there, I believe, pulls off from cabinets that may no longer be uh, usable, but the hardware is. So again, taking things from my perspective and keeping them out of the landfill, reduce, reuse, and recycle is the last ditch effort and then into the landfill. But, and um, for Rosehaven, at, when I work with Big Rocks, I do a variety of uh, drop-offs, sometimes planned and arranged with the staff there because sometimes we have large amounts of clothing and other items that we take there. So, and as far as community warehouse, again, pillows, linens, um, and some mattresses. So I've taken advantage of all those resources and I wish more people knew about them. So thanks. And helping me 
in my business of producing these wonderful birdhouses, which I'll be selling some at Farmington Gardens Vendor Holiday Market this coming weekend. Come out. Well, our whole goal today is help to help get the word out about our, these amazing agencies in our community and the items that they take and help people give back while clearing out. I do want to give a shout out to Community Warehouse Becca because in a previous life, I was a case manager for domestic violence survivors and I would come to the furniture bank with clients who were starting over in transitional housing and would walk through with them as they were selecting the furniture for their new safe home. And it was just so powerful to witness that. And they were so grateful for the resources that you provide. And we're grateful for the resources that all of our agencies here today provide. So anybody have any last questions or last thoughts to share? Well, each year our team nominates different nonprofit organizations we put them out to our community on social media and we ask people to vote for one that our team will financially support the following year. For 2023, our community chose Community Warehouse. So over the course of this year, we've donated $1,000 to, to support their mission. And we would love to continue to support um, each of your missions in the year ahead. So in our follow-up email that'll come after today and on all of our social media channels, we have a poll where people can vote. So please vote for your favorite. Um, and thank you to our community partners for being here today. Thank you for sharing your time and your passion and your expertise with us. We hope to be backing up our cars at your organization soon with some items that can really benefit those that you serve and further your mission and in, in doing wonderful work in the community. And next month, the first Wednesday of the month in January, we are going to be talking about room refresh and our very own Andrea Thompson, who's here today, is going to be walking us through that. So if you're tired of staring at your four walls once January rolls around and you want to be able to refresh your space, possibly using items that you purchase or pick up from some of our partners in the room today, um, that would be great. Please join us. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Bye.